at work deadline, and no duck. What are you doing? What you should be doing. I'm going to find someone who can do Dippy's voice. Then I'm going to dump Wally. <laughs> Call Wally Tittman to. I thought of that. He doesn't want me to. He said Rosalind is more important to him now than Dippy. And the choice between a duck and a woman, it's no contest. You never met my wife, have you? Listen, Aggie. The answer is no. You don't even know the question. There is no question because I've set up auditions this afternoon for all the available voice people in town. Fine, go ahead with your auditions, but I have a feeling Wally will be back. I finally figured out what I can do around here. I can try writing a Dippy Duck script. Writing a script? Well, I mean, I can't do editing, and I can't animate, and I can't do voices. I don't have any real talent, so writing seems like the only thing left for me to do. <laughs> this is Yoshi Nakamoto. He was the voice of Minoru Mouse for several years in Japan. Anytime you're ready, Yoshi. Dippy Duck Auditions, Yoshi Nakamoto, take one. Dippy Duck. Dare kara, majigatte jiten bakudan wo mokuyoki ni shinai de kyou ni awaseta. Dakara ato kyou de kono bokusei wa bako hatsu soru. Minna ochiu sen ni norikabe. Hayaku, hayaku, hayaku! Sayonara, Yoshi. Oh, we still have a couple of questions here. Um, what kind of a duck is this? It's a funny duck. <laughs> I mean, I have to become this duck. I have to reach down inside and, and, and figure out what it means to be this duck. Get rid of him. <laughs> Dippy is the hero of our show. Well, then how come on page two he's scared? He's a scared duck. That's true. I like that, a duck who's human. I have a couple of more questions here. Uh, page six. Harlan? Yeah? Take a hike. Uh, I won't use this. I prepared a little something of my own. He did what? <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Durand. Dippy Duck Audition, Everett Durand, take one. <laughs> Listen to this guy. Ready, fellas? A one and a two and a one, two, three. Quite adequate, Everett. What do you think, Brooke? Does he think? What do I think? He threw away my script. Any bozo could do a flock of singing ducks. Well, I think the altos were a little flat. Shut up, Brooke. <laughs> Mr. Durand, the job is yours. The job is his? That improvising tool? We can start immediately if we can uh, work out the terms. Um, one of those terms would have to be, uh, script approval. Mm. Org! <laughs> He do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Boy, you're gonna knock him dead with a voice like that. You look so impressive in that costume. Well, the stage always was my first love. Oh, so I guess everything has a reason. You know what they say. What will be, will be. Deja vu, javu. <laughs> well, there's nothing to match the excitement of an opening night, is there? If only Dippy could see me now. Look at me. I'm talking about him like he was a real person. I miss him. Me too. Everybody loved him. 
except Rosalind. How'd you do? And fine. You didn't mention anything about us hiring Everett Duran, did you? No. I didn't want to upset him before he had to go on stage. Well, hi, guys. How's everything at the duck factory? Nothing new. Same old grind. Another day, another dime. Nothing new? What are you guys talking about? Aggie hired this meatball, Everett Duran, to do dippy, and he's making us nuts. <laughs> Everett Duran? You didn't fall for that phony hallelujah chorus of his, did you? They sure did. I'm telling you, Wild, if you don't find Dippy and bring him back to us real soon, we're all going to be in the toilet. Other than that, everything is fine. I wish I could bring Dippy back, guys. You can't really mean that, darling. That silly little bird is all in the past. He wasn't silly. Well, of course he was. But it doesn't matter now. It does matter. Well, whatever. Let's run over our cues. Are you coming? Are you coming? Yeah. And then the whole choir hold their hips and laugh. All the waxing in their mirth and knees and swear. A merrier hour was never wasted there. But room, fairy, here comes over on. And here are my mistress. Would that he were gone. Met by moonlight, proud Titania. What jealous Oberon? Fairy, skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. Terry, rash one. Am I not thy lord? <laughs> Why, then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from Fairyland. And in the shape of corn sat all day playing on pipes of corn and versing in love with amorous Phyllida. How canst thou thus? For shame, Titania. <laughs> to answer my credit. With Titania. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing I know thy love to Theseus. Didst thou? <clears throat> Didst thou not lead him through the glimmering night from Peridinia? Whom he ravished? Well, Rosalind, I, uh, I have never been so humiliated in all my life. I'm sorry. Sorry? Making a laughing stock of me? Desecrating the words of the immortal bard? Oh, bard, my bird. <laughs> and the name's Wally. Remember that. Waldorf is a stupid name unless you're a solid. <laughs> This isn't like you. I've never seen this side of you before. And you like it. I hate it. Well, tough tail feathers. <laughs> Sorry, Wally. Yeah, tough break. Well, that's okay. She was beginning to get on my nerves anyway. You know, she wasn't even English. She was from Utah. Well, the main thing is we got Dippy back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just spoke to Aggie. She dumped the rent. <laughs> All right. We set up a recording session for two hours tonight if you feel up to it, Wally. But we got to hurry. Okay, let's go. All let's right. Go. Let's go. <laughs> oh, uh, wait a minute. I I better change. I, I can't go out on the street looking like this. Well, we're in Hollywood, Walnut. If anything, you're underdressed. <laughs> Next on St. Elsewhere, when Dr. Caldwell is assaulted, his secret affair is exposed. Later, Johnny Carson welcomes Shelley Winters and comedian Ronnie Shakes. Auto airbag. Are they safe? I'm Bryant Gumbel. Tomorrow morning on Today, we'll look to legal challenges to keep the bags out of cars and see if they really save lives. A timely report tomorrow on Today.